Do you want to share? Thank you. Do you want to share my phone, my second login with my phone? If I can find it. I saw a yes. wave. Can you see me waving? Okay. I see it. It's just Marsha that's a little blind. <laughs> she's actually drugged right now. Yeah. She's still, no, there we go. Yeah. Let's give him that wave. Okay. Yeah. Um, recently, when we did the Shepherd's Hut, I used a, um, a stain that some people weren't familiar with. So um, in having some conversations here on the... Um, uh, in our Zoom meetings, uh, Marsha asked me if I would speak about it. There's a Canadian company out of Victoriaville, Quebec. Uh, interestingly enough, they started making this stain. Uh, Victoriaville, Quebec is the coffin capital of Canada, okay? And coffins in Canada are not allowed to be put in the ground with a uh, non-earth-friendly um, uh, coating on them. So the, the coffin manufacturers had to create a coating that was uh, suitable to go in the soil. And they did. And somebody actually uh, asked if they could take it and put it in retail packages and sell it. So that's how this company, Saman, you see the name here, came to be. And they make several different products. But one product that I've always been using a lot of um, is this 40 pre-colored product that you can actually take it and by mixing all the color combinations, you can get 200 different colors. Wow. It's water-based, so you can clean it up, you know, with water in your own regular water tray that you use for your paint, but you get all these different stains. Um, it comes as low as a four ounce jar, and I wish I had one, but they are available on Amazon. Um, but they also come in eight ounces. These are the eight ounce ones here. Um, you know, eight ounce will last you forever in a day. Four ounces more than fine. Um, and if you and they are sold in Canada. If you go to the Saman website and put in your local zip code or postal code, it will tell you the nearest store where you can buy their products. Uh, but like I say, it's forty different colors, and out of the forty different colors, you can make two hundred colors. It'll tell you here. I don't know if you can see close up, but it'll tell you to mix like one part of one color and one part of another color and you know when you're doing miniatures you know the parts can be something that you pull through a syringe and you know just look at the ounce of the milliliters or ounces on the syringe and just pull in exactly what you need for it right but uh, like I said it's just easy cleanup one of the neat things about it if you've ever been in a situation where you had white uh, mat board or white uh, foam core or anything like that and you need it to make it look like wood you can actually do it with this one of the things that they actually um, sell this stain as is um, I know in Canada you can buy these white prefab interior doors they're already primed and everything but many times people want them to look like wood but using this same product you can actually make it look like wood you actually can take it and make effects like this with it Wow. So like this is just wood, uh, just foam core that I just, a piece of foam core that I just took and I just made a wood pattern with it. Wow. And I simply just painted it on with a foam brush. And then you have to use a polyester uh, brush. And I use this one here. People have probably seen it before. And literally just ran it through the stain until I got that wood effect. Wow. So very easy to, you know, if you don't want to invest in wood and you've got lots of mat board or foam coring, you can do it easily with this stuff, right? So really neat. Originally, it, it used to come in these plastic jars and I keep this one and it got so messy. The very first one I ever bought, and this is the one I used on the shepherd's hut, was black. I don't know if I can get this back far enough you can see it. But it's, it was huge. They're huge jars. I have enough here for the next 75 years. <laughs> um, and like I say, it was just, I work in the coatings industry. So I get a lot of these samples for free, like that black one I got for free. They had a lot of issues with those types of jars with the big lids on them, with them leaking. So they actually moved 
those type of things to regular cans like this. So this is a smaller uh, 472 um, milliliter um, can of the stain. Uh, but for the craft industry, they came out with three different sizes. They came out with a four ounce, an eight ounce, and a 12 ounce. 12 ounce is almost like a jug. Actually, I got a picture of it here. Um, yeah, you can see here, there's the 12 ounce. It looks like oh, a jug. Geez. But it's actually quite small, even though it looks it looks big. One of the other neat things they've done with it is that a lot of people have been so used to using Minwax that they've actually taken every Minwax stain and they've given you the same combination of how many parts of each color to make every Minwax stain, but in a water base. Oh, that's handy. So what I sent these, I scanned all these sheets I had here and I sent them to Marsha. So she's actually uploaded them onto the group's IO um, for everybody to see. So it's a real neat product that they have there. Um, a third product they have, and I wish I had some of it here. I thought I did, but I couldn't find it. They also came in with another product. I simply call it SSV <laughs> because it stands for um, seal, stain, and varnish. And it's a um, it's a smaller uh, 16 colors. And with this, you can actually take something in miniature or in full size furniture that's already been stained and sealed. And by just giving it a wash with something like TSP, you can actually apply this stain right on top of an existing stain. Wow. So they showed here with, on this picture here with a natural wood ceiling that they put a darker golden oak uh, right on top of it. Oh, wow. And I've, I've seen people do table, kitchen table and chairs with it. Like they might have had a golden oak and they want it to be an espresso color. And they've actually put used that uh, stain on it and it actually holds up and holds up well. So for miniature, obviously, it's not going to take the wear and tear. It should be fantastic for that. This, unfortunately, is only available. I think the smallest size this comes in is uh, 236 milliliters, which is eight ounces. Oh. There's the, you can see the cans on there. Yeah. But like I say, it's, it's just all water-based, so it's really, really easy to clean up. Uh, I took a couple of colors here and I mixed them and like I put them in a sealed container. One of the other things they have with it is is neutral. And the neutral makes helps you to lighten a lot of colors too. There's no tint to it whatsoever. But it will lighten the color for you. So neat little product. And it is available in the US, even though it's made in Canada. Right. Terrific. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Any questions? That was awesome. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much. No problem. Do you know of like a polyurethane that is water-based that would be easy to clean up with? Um, good question. I'm sure these guys have it, uh, but I can find out for you. Um, okay. Whoever you are, I can't see who's speaking, but Carol, you Carol, put... Johnson. Carol Johnson. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Just put your email in the chat and I will okay. find out and I will um, uh, send you an email on it. Okay. Just Thank post you very it much. on the Just post it on the group because we might all want to know that. Yeah, oh, well, definitely. I can do that as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. No problem. And Elaine is here. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I totally lost track of time. How much money do we have, Elaine? We We're have one thousand. One thousand four hundred and twenty dollars and thirty-seven cents. Thank you. Okay, treasurer report is done. Back to <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I also have a visiting cat who likes oh. to sit on computer keyboards. <laughs> oh, Elaine, <laughs> could you repeat that for me? I didn't quite get it. Fourteen. One four two zero oh, thirty-seven cents. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> and we also have a new member on here who is very talented with art type things. And uh we're 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 talking her into doing some create shares. Siggy. <laughs> Could you wave, please? Hi, Siggy. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And and yeah, she's going to do some create shares, right? 
So yeah, exciting. Carolyn, all about brushes. <laughs> I mean, to tell you the truth, Marsha, I don't know what you really want me to tell you. <laughs> um, Siggy being the artist, or Laura who paints, probably knows more about some of this stuff than than I do. Um, I can tell you how to make a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I do work in a brush factory. We make makeup and painting and all kinds of brushes. And if you've used, now these are mine because they were they were bad at work. If anybody's bought the Micron, these brushes from Micromark. Whoops. All right, wait. Let me take my back my blur off here. Hold it a second. Okay. Uh, if anybody's bought any of these or used any of these. No. Micromark. Mm -hmm. They're really, really tiny. Micromark sells them. They sell them in sets. My company okay. makes them. The place where I work makes these. So if you buy a pack, if you buy a set of these, there's a good possibility I'm the one that put the set together because that's my job. <laughs> I work in packaging, but I also worked in the brush making area, which is to make a brush. So I can tell you how to make a brush. Um, the basic things I can tell you is if you get, you know, make sure you store your brushes upright when you store them. Don't store them hair down because you mess up the hair. The big thing in my department is packaging. And our big thing is not messing up the hair on the brush. Mm -hmm. um, if you get brushes that come in a set or you buy singles or whatever, and they come with the little, the little cap on them, the little plastic cap, which we call a tip. If you can see it on there. Okay. Best advice is don't throw this out uh, because it's on there to protect the hair on the brush. And that's part of my job is I sit and <laughs> put the little tips on the brushes. Um, and the idea is to put them on and not get any of the hairs bent. Don't bend your hairs when you put them back on. You got to be really careful. The best way to do that, I would suggest is, of course, don't leave your brushes sitting in the water. I do it all the time. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, <laughs> don't leave them sitting in the water, you know, put them in for you know a little bit, swish them around, clean them and make sure they're clean. Try not to get the paint up in the, I've got a larger size brush for this. Try not to get the up, uh, I mean the paint up into the ferrule. If anybody doesn't know, that's this part. Parts yeah. of a paintbrush, hair, ferrule, handle, okay? <laughs> So try not to get the paint up into the ferrule. That's that's not you shouldn't, okay. But of course I I do all the time. But you you shouldn't you shouldn't really get the paint up into the ferrule. Um, you and why is that? Out, yeah, clean them out right away. It just it messes up the hair and it messes up the the brush, and then it gets all stuck down in there. Mm -hmm. It's all stuck down at the bottom of your brush and get, getting it into the ferrule because it messes up the brush. It messes up the hair, but that's part of my job. <laughs> Make sure the hair is not messed up. Um, and also, the best advice I have, see, when we send stuff out from the factory, a lot of it is what they call, and there's one woman that, that does this job, it's called, it's gummed, all right? Which is when you, if you buy a brush and the bristles are all stiff, when the first time you use it, okay? Um, well, we use is this two different kinds but the one sort that kim uses is hot gum and that's made just from flax seeds okay regular flax seeds that you can buy in the supermarket buy in the store and she boils them and when you boil them down with a lot of water okay she strains the seeds out and you're left with this sticky gummy substance <clears throat> who's that behind so that's what she uses to gum the bristles on the brush and make them stiff to again protect the hair and then it's also easier for us to get the tips on if they're if they're nice and gummed and they're nice and stiff because then the hair isn't going all over the place um i would suggest that you go out and get a brush cleaner i had one here i don't know if i still have that. i don't think i do i had a little jar here at one time it was a brush cleaner and shaper. And you can just get that stuff in like Michael's Hobby Lobby in like the art department, not with the craft paint. It's usually with the art stuff. Um, and, and to use that. So after you clean your brushes and wipe off and get all the paint and stuff off of them, that you use something to reshape them. 
and that keeps the brushes nice. I mean, I don't know what else to much say. I'm, I'm sure Siggy and Laura have, have better tips or more stuff to share because they're artists and they, I would think they would know how to take care of the brushes a little bit better than me, but I don't know. Does anybody have any questions? Cool. I think it would be cool if you taught us how to make a brush and then we could do it in miniature. To make a paintbrush in real life in the factory, there's about yeah. eight different departments the brush goes through. Really? Goes out the door, yes. There's brush making, which I do know how to do, but again, that's several steps. We use a big marble tile, special little shaped cups, depending on the shape of the hair on the brush. I know how to make three. I know how to make three different kinds of, well, four different kinds of brushes that that I've done. I don't do it all the time anymore, though. I started out as a brush maker, and I help them in between if they get backed up with certain kinds of brushes, the simple ones, flats, and and this lettering brush and that. Um, so a lot of steps to make, putting the hair in the ferrule and making a brush. From there, it goes to what we call the nylox department. It's like a, like a nylon epoxy. It's a glue, it's a special glue that uh, goes through a machine. And she actually has like a little squirt gun type thing. So she sets up all the brushes with, and you got to make sure the hair is in nice and tight before you give it, give them over to Linda, because if you don't, the hair falls out, you know, you would take the brush she tapes them all. Now, it doesn't have a handle on it, okay? It's just a ferrule and hair. And she tapes them all around a box, actually, she uses. And then she takes the uh, the glue and, you know, puts a couple of shots, depending on the size of the, the brush, into the ferrule. And that holds the hair in this end. So it doesn't fall out until it moves on to the next apartment. Wow. Then, depending on, the, depending on the brush, it either goes to Kim, who does the gumming, makes them stiff and then goes to Imelda who does trimming which is she makes them to size make sure there's no little stray hairs sticking up some brushes need to be shaped especially makeup brushes if they're ovals or certain shapes in the hair um she trims them she's been doing it for 20 something years so she's an expert she's like 25 years or more in the in the in the factory um and she trims them to whatever shape or a flat brush you know straight across flat brush if you have anything loose or sticking up loose hairs, she trims it across the top, okay? There are machines and stuff we use. The brushes sometimes go through a cleaning, a couple of cleaning machines. I was doing that today. I did, what I do today? 7,400 brushes I cleaned today. Wow. That was my that was my work today. But I have a machine that does that. You just feed them into the machine. It's four huge vacuums. You stick the brushes with the hair sticking out in a, in a on a belt, and the belt catches it. So have to feed it into the machine, it catches it, and it runs it through. And there's four big vacuums and these four big rotator things that go like this, and they spin very fast, and they riffle the hair on the brush, you know, like this, as it goes through the machine and pulls out, the suction pulls out anything that's loose or that comes out. Oh, that was another thing I want to tell you. If you do get a cheap brush, you get a brush that tends to be losing its hair, what we do in the factory to clean a brush, this is another thing. Things get, they, they get cleaned, they get gummed, they get trimmed and everything after they get glued. What, you, what we do is we have big, you know, big two, three inch rolls of masking tape. We use masking tape, just roll, you know, so the sticky side is here, okay? And we take the brushes and you go like this gently and you go like this on the tape and the tape pulls out anything that's loose. So if you do get a brush that's got like some hairs falling out, try this to see if this works. So you don't get the stray hairs in whatever you're painting. Cause I've had that happen with the really cheap ones when you buy like the cheap brush sets and stuff mm -hmm. from China. Mm -hmm. After a while, yeah, the hair falls out. And of course you don't wanna leave this in the water because if you leave it in the water, not only does it bend the hair and mess the hair up, it affects the wood and stuff under here and loosens up the glue and your ha your handles fall <laughs> you have to watch that okay so after that happens upstairs whatever trimming gumming whatever needs to be done cleaning of the brushes and stuff then they go downstairs i work at the second floor they goes downstairs and then it goes they go the head this is you know the head the ferrule and the hair is called the head goes to handling and that's another department. And they have all the handles which have been stamped by another department with 
I said, I, I've got this one at home because if you can see it, it's all chipped and everything. That's why I was allowed to take it because it can't be sold. It's messed up. Yeah. So <laughs> I get to take those home in between. Um, what happens is somebody comes along and has all the heads and they put them out on the table and they have all their handles and you sit there because I've done this job too. And you sit there and you put the handles on the brushes. If you have a flat brush, look at your flat brushes when you get a chance. The flat part of the brush should be lined up with the stamping, the name on the handle. Oh. That's how they're supposed to be done. So if you look at your flat. Oh. If you look at if you look at your flat brushes, they should your flat part of the brush should be lined up with the name on the brush, the stamping. I never okay. noticed it was only one flat side. Right. Yeah. So that's the, you know, that's that's how when you handle and that's how they're at least by us, that's how they're supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Certain parts, you know, certain, certain, some, and sometimes if it's, if it's a makeup brush, which is a right angle, a left angle, the angle has to be facing a certain direction and stuff when it goes on the handle, depending on what brush it is. Um, so it goes down, it goes to handling, then it goes to what's called crimping, which is what there's, they have machines that make those little lines, you know, those little marks that are around mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of the barrel, okay. And now there's two things. When it goes to handling, it can just get stuck on, depend again, on the brush. Or sometimes they're using hot glue, you know, hot melt glue, the glue gun. Sometimes they're hot melted on. Sometimes it's another, it's a two-part epoxy that they mix up. Little thing of, a, of, of epoxy, you know, a glue. And put it, it all, again, depends on the brush, depends on the customer, what they want, and, and the type of brush that we're making. And then from there, I said, it goes to crimping where they do the little marks on there, which is supposed to help hold it on the handle. Okay, but as I said, if you leave them in the water, and I mean, ask me how I know this. <laughs> if you leave them sitting in the water too long, it messes up the handles and the handles come off and everything. Then you can try some kind of glue. Um, I've tried super glue and stuff on mine. It doesn't work. You could try it. If you have hot melt glue, you can try to put a little hot melt glue, a little drop or two inside the ferrule. And shove the handle back in. Hopefully that'll hold it. But and again, depending on the brush, after crimping gets it, it either goes to bagging for mass bagging, you know, where somebody uses one of those heat seal bag machines and they dump like 12 in a bag and send it out. Or it comes up to my department, which is especially the makeup brushes, we do more than more than anything else. Um, sort of quality control which is what I'm doing now. I have a whole, we have a bunch of stuff we've got to check out starting tomorrow, which is to look over the brush to make sure that the name stamped on is correct, to make sure that it looks right. I mean, that's how you catch stuff like this, like chipped handles. And I had one, I think I showed you before where the stamping is like on top of each other or too close together. If you can look at this brush, see how this looks? Yeah. yeah. That's bad because it's supposed to be across from each other supposed to say micron on one side and the UPC should be on the back. So something happened when this one was stamped. This is the kind of stuff that I have to check for during the day, part of my job. And then we check the hairs and we check and make sure there's no glue and all this kind of fun thing. And then we either put the tips on, uh, it goes in a bag, it goes in a pouch, vinyl pouch sometimes. It gets made into a set. If they send stuff up for certain paint sets, you know, different size brushes, when they come on one of those cards, that's the kind of thing that I do. And then it goes back downstairs again and then gets shipped out to wherever it's going. So that's what we do where I work. So, Okay, Marsha, take the spotlight off me, please. Carolyn, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, I've Somebody... got a little something to share and then we've got some questions in the chat box. Okay. I Googled. Um, some, what are, oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I get this all mixed up now. Come on. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Okay, I'll try again. Yeah, so the, the brushes, the, the very, very tiny detail brushes that Micromark sells, those ones with the black bulb handles that I know a couple right. people had, and the Micron and a few of the others, we make those. Those oh. come out of the factory. To Caroline's point, why Marsha's trying to find that. 
uh, I was in a, a yep. brush factory uh, last month and um, they, um, the, the shaping part that Caroline, uh, Caroline just talked about there, that was being done by a robotic arm. Oops. Because nobody could twist their arm back and forth enough to get the shape of a brush. Right? So they were using a robotic arm to do it. Oh my goodness. That's pretty cool. Okay, I hope it's up now. Yeah, my boy. Yeah. That. <laughs> and one of the questions in the chat box is what brushes are made of, the, the brush part. It, that you mean the yeah, the hair part. And this is this is pretty good. This is what we use. I was working with black ox yesterday. We use black white bristle. There's a Kalinsky, which is like a weasel kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um those those are apparently very good. The Kalinsky stable brushes, their softness. Um, and that's very expensive, apparently, Kalinsky hair. Um, sable is a real sable is really good for painting. And yes, sheep, goat, ox, camel. Yes, I have I have seen Sally, who's our longest there brush maker. She's been there 30 something years. She's 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 only about my age. She started in the factory when she was like 18, 19 years old, like at high school. Um, she's a make she and she's our premier brush maker. For anything everybody goes to sally for to, to you know do certain shapes and, and stuff um i've seen her use camel they use a lot of ox they use a lot of like pig you know bristle and stuff comes from pig um yes we do use some horse yes we use a lot of squirrel some of wow. it is squirrel hair uh our factory tries to be very environmentally conscious so, you know, they're not killing animals to shave the hair off to use them for brush for, for brushes and stuff. You know, they they try to be very sustainable about some of that stuff. Roadkill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, and they then they they, you know, and, and there is synthetic stuff too. I have, you know, we do yeah. make some and synthetic and there's there's stuff that's a mix, the synthetic natural mix too that we use. Oh. All different kinds of stuff. I think they even had, I'm trying to remember, I think the most exotic thing was a zebra fur we had one time. There was something re for something really weird. Sally was using several years ago. I think it was zebra or something like that. They were using fur from, from something. So, yeah. Okay, the chat box. Uh, the first question was what kind of animals are used? Uh, any questions or comments on that? Nope. And the next one is one way to shape your brushes before they are dry is to roll the tip on a bar of hand soap mm -hmm. and use your findings to shape it. Fingers. Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it will harden and keep the yep. shape. Just rinse in water before you use it. And Kelly, do you have anything to add to that? And is she? Uh, I yeah. I don't really have anything to add to it, but way back in one of my future lives, I used to do decorative painting. And that was one of the things that, that I was taught to do. To If you don't have that little plastic thing the, that she was I, talking about, you know, this way you can shape any of your brushes, whether they're flats or rounds or angle. Mops are a little hard to, to, to shape, but... It helps keep the bristles in in their shape, and all you have to do is just rinse them a few times in some water, and you're all ready to go. Yeah, it works. I'm sure. I'm sure it works just like gumming would work in the factory. Yeah. Same, same yeah. principle. And I've heard actually. I think it was Debbie Young that gave us this tippet around to it, or at some meeting. I'm pretty sure it was Debbie who said during the pandemic, with all the hand sanitizer she had. She found the hand sanitizer was really good for cleaning the brushes, especially if they had a lot of dried paint in them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that instead of alcohol. Yeah, right. because it's got the alcohol in it. So if you've got loads of hand sanitizer at your house, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can use that to clean the the clean brushes too, especially if it has dried up paint in it. And I've heard dish I've heard people using like dish soap and stuff too a little bit. Yes. Like yeah. a little squirt. Yep. The yep. one is very good for that, for cleaning anything out. Mm -hmm. uh, no. uh, Laura Wright, do you have anything to add about brushes? And you're muted. You're muted, Laura. <laughs> um, I 
You're Ooh. muted. Oh, now. Okay. I... Okay. Now, now you're all right. Yeah, I guess I don't have too much to add. I mean, the most important thing I think is not to leave your brush sitting in water. And really, when you're painting, you're supposed to have two buckets of water, one which you keep clean and one which is basically your um, dirty water. Um, and so you can then rinse your brush off in the dirty water. And then I usually then end up with the clean water and take your brush out of the water. Don't just leave it soaking in there because it disrupts that glue on the ferrule that you were talking about. And that's why sometimes the brush gets loose is, is when you leave it in the water. Um, but I don't have don't really have too much else just don't dip it in your drink <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> yeah i have three i three have done containers that. of water the first one is the dirty dirty the second i rinse it in that wipe it off put it in the second one rinse it off wipe it off put it in the third one and wipe and rinse and wipe off good one yeah i you can uh, buy I like pill some... bottles <laughs> Hobby Lobby actually has um, a square white bucket that has two divisions in it. Oh. And and that works really quite handy. And then it's got holes to put your brushes. Yeah, there you go. And then, it, yeah, it has, you can put your brushes here. I have been putting um, um, soap and a little bit of Dawn and water in one and then just clear rinse water in the other. And I put my brushes in without putting, they have a, a bridge type thing here where you can scrape. I don't do that, but I just lay them kind of in there, you know, at an angle. And then for a little few minutes and swish it around, swish it around, swish it around. And then I come over here and swish it around, swish it around. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And then I can store them upright this way to dry. I yeah. learned a tip from uh, the two guys from Texas, uh, those who might know, remember them. Um, they told us to, um, Clean our brushes in water with a little bit of fabric softener in them because it helps get the paint out. Really? Yeah. It would keep water with fabric softener, softener next to them to rinse them for the first rinse. Yeah. Hmm. Probably helps keep the hair soft too, maybe. Probably does, right. It's natural. If it's the natural, the natural hair. Yeah. The other the other, I had a, watched a video on a guy that he's an artist and he was talking about cleaning brushes and, and I think we've got it. I think I gave it to Marsha some time ago and it's somewhere on, on MCC website. But anyway, he um, uses, you know, like the Dawn and um, water and, and cleans them that way. And then, and then when he's done, he puts on matte clay, which is a hair product. Um, it has to be matte and he take and it what it looks like is kind of like shoe polish and so afterwards when he's all done cleaning them he takes the brush and he just wipes his finger a little bit you don't need a lot just a little bit and then he runs that through the bristles and then to straight to shape the bristles he takes your hand and you run it through the the crease in your hand to shape your bris bristles and you mm. leave that overnight and but before you use the brush the next time you take it and you just rinse out the clay that you put on there is it water-based um i you know to be uh, i don't know i would assume so if you rinse it out and it yeah comes... yeah it's I, kind yeah, of the idea yeah it's the idea of i would be yeah it's a men's it's clay for men is what it is it's not real cheap but look how the, i mean you know this is lasting forever <laughs> um and i've been doing that with my brushes um and he even said if the brush like this brush is off, well, not that one so much, but this brush is damaged. The the bristles are really bad. Right. And so he was saying on some of them, if they're not too bad and you clean it the way he was saying that um, you can kind of maybe, re, you know, get them to where they're at least usable. And then he said, if not, you cut the ends off short and use it as a, as a, <laughs> as a, a dab or, uh, oh. yeah, or as oh, a dry brush. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Julia, you had some kind of a deal that you got not too long ago for cleaning brushes. Do you have it handy? And 
Yeah. It's been breaking up pretty bad. Yeah. Audio yeah. Your, your, uh, yeah. sound is not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything to say? Okay, Julia. But uh, what, what Kim does is when we have a flat and she gums it, okay, she, you know, really gets it in there and makes sure it's all down inside that, you know, all down in all the bristles and everything, not just the tip. She really shoves it in and shoves it down and, and gets all stuff. And then she uses, um, uh, you know, paper towel type napkin things like you'd have them, like in a bathroom or something like that, but paper towels and she gets out the excess. And then you take a flat and she goes like this and pull you pull it up to shape it. And then she does a little on the sides to make sure all the side hairs are in. Let me do it this way so you can see it. You go like this. Because I've done some gumming too. I mean, in the factory, everybody sort of has to know everybody else's job a little bit. So yeah. and you go like that. And then around, as she does around, she dips around in, again, wipes it all off. And then you just take it and you kind of pinch it and just pull. To get the to try to get the point back on again, right? Keep the shape. Shirley. Yeah, I'm here. You had something in the chat box. Yeah, um, a number of years ago, uh, they uh, got craft paint on one of our tablecloths at church, and I used vinegar, and this was dried navy blue paint on a white tablecloth, and it took a lot of applications, but it took it out. I don't know how that would work on brushes where, you know, like, especially if, if it's uh, up in the ferrule. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't do too much good to spotlight you. With. <laughs> no. <laughs> As I said, her, her, um, her, her, uh, what do you call it? Um, plastic surgery. Plastic surgery mm -hmm. was yeah. obviously very successful. You're very <laughs> adorable. Yeah. And oh. that's two of, two of my ferret kids. And uh, I uh, read one, uh, source years ago that said sable is from ferrets for the brushes. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, just to mention that technique that. I showed earlier on uh, making white foam board look like wood. Most of the craft brushes out there, especially the good quality ones, are as you just mentioned, natural fibers. But to do that technique, you have to use a synthetic fiber brush because oh. the natural fiber brush kind of puts all the, uh, the paint and stain together and the synthetic brush separates it and you're trying to get the stain to separate right mm. so uh, that's why you have to use a synthetic one so there's times that a natural brush works well and there's times that a synthetic brush works well it's just knowing what to use when interesting okay anything else about brushes I have something that's not about brushes, but we're talking about cleaning brushes. And I okay. found item I haven't tried it yet, but um, where it's water that comes down. Yeah, that's well, yeah. Seen that it cleans that's what it. Julia and has. Oh, Julia has that. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. kind of what Julia yeah. has. Yeah, I have one here, and it already. I haven't set it up yet, but it's assembled. Where did you get it? Timu. Right. So I finally tried Timu and got my stuff from there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm I not was my Siggy something. See, uh, Siggy, aren't you an artist? Mm -hmm. I am. I'm just listening to everybody else. But I, I have, you know, I use a lot of really big brushes, but I also use small, small brushes. And one thing, a tip that I can give you, and I've been painting for probably I don't know, 50 years. And um, if you have a brush that's solid like rock and you just say, oh God, I'm going to throw this brush out. Mm -hmm. Don't throw it out. Use Murphy's oil soap. Murphy's oil soap. I have had, mm -hmm. so I used to have like a 10 woman crew and sometimes people would forget to uh, clean the brushes and they throw them in another bucket. And if you found that, that brush a year later, you could still get all the paint out of it with Murphy's oil soap. So a lot of times I'll just take, so you have, the one thing about Murphy's oil soap though, what I do is I just put it in a jar, like a mason jar, and I'll put the brush in there. But you have to make sure that you don't have the oil soap any, you can't get as high as the furrow. 
because once you get into the furrow, you can you can separate the um, glue and have it all come apart. But mm. really, if you have a brush that's a year old of paint, oh. or you found it under your craft table after you cleaned up two months later, um, <clears throat> really try the Murphy oil soap. I I clean all my brushes with Dawn dish soap, all mm -hmm. of them. And I shape them all with Dawn dish soap. I have some Betty Bird brushes that are 40 years old that are that are really fine 0, 0.0 liner brushes that I've had for that long. And um, I don't put the tips back on my brushes, those little plastic tips. And uh, <clears throat> And I used to tell students not to put the tips on because a lot of people aren't careful enough to really put that tip on without getting a hair caught in it. I mean, if you're good at that, that's a good thing to do. But for some people, you know, they're in a hurry and that that really ruins the brush if you put the tip on incorrectly. Um, that's that's the only tips I can give you, but I know make sure- that. As I said, Siggy, that's part of my job every day is putting the tips on our brushes before we send them out. And you've got to be right. really- And check them if other people have done them. Like that's what we're doing now. We're re-tipping stuff because you'll get one and all of a sudden you'll get one and all the hairs will be pulled down because somebody has just shoved it on and someplace else in the factory. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, but the Dawn just soap, I mean, I've been using that for probably 45, 50 years. And I have tried like, you know, they do make green, green bars of soap that are for artists. Um, and I really like those two. They do clean your brush as well but they really clean your hands great because they have, um, I always say it feels like they have sand in the brush because it just takes all the paint off of your hands. Um, oh, if I think of it, if I think of it, I'll pull it out for next week and I can show you girls. Yeah, what it's, it a, it's, a pumice, it's a pumice base probably. Yeah, I have green bars of soap. It's um, lava soap. My father used to use lava. 40 yeah. years ago too to clean the grease and stuff off his hands because it's got that grit in it yeah yeah no this is made specifically for artists yeah but it's, um, it's this, probably this similar one. right yeah yeah um but you know whatever works for you is what you should do the thing that works the easiest and the best for you is what you should do you know oh i have a, a suggestion for people that don't get the uh the caps back on easily Take a piece of stiff cardboard, almost like a um, oh, like future uh, cardboard, and uh, put a rubber band on it, and just slide your brushes in that, or put your brush down inside of a straw. It's plenty big enough. Put it uh, handle in first, but it's plenty big enough, and it'll protect the bristles. Okay, any other questions that maybe somebody can answer about brushes? No, but I have a question to ask. All right. Okay, is it better to dry your brushes with the brush at the top and standing up? Yeah. Or is it better to somehow hang them so they the brush part is down after you've washed them? Or lay them flat? I lay mine flat. I lay mine flat. That's what I do. Um, because if you stand up straight up and down and they're wet, that water gets into the glue and the furrow and eventually well, the hairs will start to come out. But I, I just lay them flat is what I do. That's my inclination to worry about. But I was looking at some of those water things on Timu just now and mm -hmm. a lot of them have a thing in them to stand them with the brush up in the air, but it does seem like the water would go down into the yeah. barrel. Yeah. Wow. So is Timu, Timu good for artist supplies? I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mentioning it though. Yeah. I've bought How a lot from them. Spell yeah. team. How do you spell it? T-E-M-U. I'm, I'm going to get something I just received today. It's interesting for everybody. I'll come right back. Okay. Timu is just basically Amazon. It's just a different version. Yeah. 
and pretty much everything from Timu, I think it comes directly from the manufacturer and a lot of it comes out of China. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I keep I getting the ads on my phone for it, but I was afraid to try it. I don't like buying from China. <laughs> it seems kind of low priced stuff, actually. Yeah. yeah. From what yeah. I've read about them, it they, supposedly the prices are so low because it's like they, they send it directly from the factories where it's made or something. There's no middleman, yeah. whatever. I just recently bought from Timu. And I do not suggest buying any of the rice paper or anything Ooh. because it came all crinkled. But the quality mm. is, it's okay. I mean, it's not high quality, but it's good stuff for throwaway is what I refer to it as. <laughs> right. Well, I've never I bought would... anything from Timu. I only looked there because people were mentioning it. So I just looked there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I would yes, put sir. it in the classification of harbor freight. Harbor freight sells a lot of stuff yeah. right. and it's cheap. And if if you want it for throwaway, it's probably pretty good, but you don't want to buy your really good equipment there. Right. I think Correct. Wanda has something to show. Yeah, she does. So I received this today. One of the things they said for Cape Cod you need it was a lamp. This is actually a lamp. Oh, nice. Wow. Yes, and I have it that. folds up. Mm -hmm. And this folds out. Mm -hmm. This is the lamp. But here's the interesting part no cords. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's battery. It's battery. Operated. Nice. Oh, so it's, wow. It has three settings and then goes and then an off setting. So uh, is it battery it? operated or rechargeable? It's rechargeable, so it, I've oh, only wow. had. I only What's had the brand? Is it so an Ot light? Is it an Ot light? No, it's not. No, they don't sell it's brands. Like LED. But... And you see, there's a warm light nice. and a cool oh, light. Oh wow! And, and that's really from Timu. That's nice. That's that from Timu. Nice. Yeah. See, there's the cool light. Nice. Is that from Timu? Yeah. There's the warm light. Does so you leave your thumb out until you get the right light that you want? Wanda, does the arms go out more this mm -hmm. way? Pardon? Uh, the arm, which is in between the base and the light, does it go? Does it will it swivel out this way? Which way? This yeah, no, it doesn't swivel. Okay, it okay. just tilts. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, for the price, it, it was less than I think thirteen dollars. Oh yeah. wow, that is a good price. Yeah. Is that it just a folds up shipping it weighs well, next to nothing so i wanda? have no idea how long it will last but wanda you know, where did you get it from timu okay thank you is shipping is for a name art light makes the same one just so you know but it's cool uh, no this is not an art light no right no but i'm saying they don't I sell have brand names on timu does it have a name that we would look for it um most of this is engraved into the bottom but it's chinese <laughs> uh, but there, there is i i will again i'll post that i'll i'll get the number right off my maybe i can get off my order form here now because i got the email saying it was delivered one thing i would recommend for anything that you're getting from china um try to double check the size if they give you the centimeters actually look at it on you know of how big that actually is because sometimes i they'll have some things listed as one twelfth one six so you're not it kind of makes you wonder what you're getting so it's just be careful of the it was eleven dollars and ninety eight cents Canadian <laughs> I'm trying to get into my order here. I have to get you the model number. This is Kelly. I've ordered a few things from Timo, and they don't like to give you the sizes on the no website. So <laughs> it it can be kind of like a hit or miss. I've gotten some things that were good for twelfth scale, and I've got some things that were probably closer to sixth. Yeah, I did that too. I got some yeah. soda cans, 
and yeah. they are baby size. Everything yep. I've ordered for miniatures on Timu, the sizes, everything that I've ordered, the sizes are in the pictures, not in the descriptions that I found. So when you're looking at Timu, it'll provide pictures, and that's yeah. where, I'll, where I find the dimensions. So. I can share my screen and show you the product on the screen if that helps you so you can find it. Um, I don't see a model number here. It's actually cheaper now than I paid for it, by the way. That rats my socks, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a dollar cheaper than I paid for it. Pretty exciting. There it is. There. All we see is a white screen. So yeah, yeah, the one piece rechargeable desk slant with three lighting mode. Wait, Wanda, Hello? you have to Did take off everybody? your sharing screen first. Yeah, Wanda, you have to take off your sharing screen before you. Oh, there you go. Okay. There. There. Okay. One piece recharge. Wait. Did you see it? I couldn't hear anybody. It's like our last. It volume. came up just briefly. Oh, okay. Do you want me to try it again? Yes, yes. please. I think Marsha unpins it too quick. No, I didn't do anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you have to click on the white and then show it. It seems I freeze every time I share the screen. Oh. Can you see my screen now? It's no, just the white one. White. There. there we go. Leave it there. Don't, yeah. Did it take a long time to get to you? Now we see it. Mm -hmm. uh, two weeks, maybe, in total. Okay. Um, I ordered something from Timu. I mean, a few things, and it came in within a week. Maybe it depends where you live. Probably. Yeah. Because I was shocked how fast it came. Yeah. On my shipments, else, so. they would give me a, a date I should receive it. And if you don't receive it by that day, they give you a $5 credit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And I did get the $5 credit once. Yeah. Now, so up here in this I'm one box, share it says here now. Light. Everybody got it? Yes. Yeah, got it. And I, I ordered from them once and I got the $5 credit. And then they sent me a full refund because they didn't come. They say in the way it should come. They gave me a full refund. Wow. I was just crazy. They said it was lost and I got it. And I'm like, okay. And they said, if it comes, just keep it. They let, it literally sent me an email saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to return something and I only paid like, I don't know, five dollars for it or something. And they said just keep it. And they just sent me a new one. Oh. I thought mine didn't work when I got it. There was no it wouldn't work at all, but I didn't realize that I needed to charge it for a bit of time. Oh. So once it was plugged in for about five minutes, then it started to work. All right, the other thing that was on the list was chalk paint. I know nothing what? about chalk paint. Chalk, chalk paint. Chalk paint. Someone told me don't use chalk paint for miniatures. Why? I don't remember who that was. Um, I use it all the time. Do you? Well, because you don't have to sand down any old stuff. You know, like if you're redoing old furniture or something, right. you don't have to sand it down to use chalk paint. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is the biggest advantage of it, for sure. Yeah, and but you do have to uh, seal it afterwards if you want any kind of, and you have to sand it so you have a smooth finish if you want a smooth finish. Yeah. Yeah, but I isn't have a lot it of too thick for miniatures? 
No. No. You just you can thin it with water. Yeah, I it I just thought it was pretty thick. I have a bunch. It depends, it depends what brand you get. I mean, I only have used Annie Sloan, so yeah, that's what I have. And I, if it's too thick, I just add some water to it. You can thin it or thicken it. I took a class at the store here that sells Annie Sloan and uh, learned a whole lot about it. And they have a wax. Annie Sloan has a wax you can put over it too if you'd rather oh. use that mm -hmm. than a spray finish. That's cool. And if you like chalk paint, but you don't want to go out and buy it and you have a lot of regular paint, you can buy this product here, which is basically plaster of Paris. See it moving in the Paris, bottom yeah. of my jar? Yeah. And, uh, and you, this is called My Chalk Paint. And uh, you just add a teaspoon of this to, or a tablespoon, sorry, to every cup of paint. So you'd have to adjust accordingly if you're not using and what a full does that cup do? of paint. It, it turns regular paint into chalk paint. Oh, cool. That's now, what's the benefit of chalk paint? Like, why would somebody use it? No prep it's work. stick to anything. No what? prep work. It'll stick to anything. No prep uh -huh. work, you said. Mm -hmm. After Just, I did one, um, I don't know if you remember the craft cupboard that we had through name here a couple years ago. Where the part of it folded up and the doors closed. Yeah. Okay, I did that in in chalk paint, and the only sanding I did to get it smooth was the old paper bag trick. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, those were the ones we did for the Sacramento House Party souvenirs. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. and then uh, Ruth Stewart, who uh, did them for us, um, she um, made a different pattern and sold them on her site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where I got it. Yeah, I believe. Probably one of the most common ones in the U.S. is um, decor. It's Americana chalk paint. Mm -hmm. Like they do that, I think, in 30 different colors. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Michaels has one called Art of Mine, Art Mines chalk paint. The only one I use is Cocoon because it looks like concrete. It's the color of concrete. Oh. And I got a huge jar of it because it's all I could get. Oh. There's a couple of Canadian companies that make it as well, but I don't know if it's available in the U.S. And the, the reason, I, one of the reasons I like Annie Sloan, well, of course, it's hard to find, first of all. Mm. But the next thing is that uh, it comes in little uh, sample size containers. Yeah. Um, little jars like this little jar yeah. yes so you don't have to buy like a two ounce oh. jar yeah. so where would you buy those do you know annie yeah. sloan would be available through an annie sloan dealer she only she's yeah. very sp uh, specific who she sells to i can't get it here in newfoundland even though she was a dealer as for the company i work for but uh, um there's none of the stores in newfoundland that carry we just happen to have a store here in Grass Valley, California, a small town uh, mm -hmm. that has it and mm -hmm. teaches class in, classes in using it. And that's how Debbie Young found it too. Yeah. Annie Everybody Sloan here? invented the chalk paint. She's the inventor of it. She's the one who did it first and everybody else has just been copying it ever since. Mm -hmm. Actually, around here in New York, when I was trying to find stuff because of Debbie, the wax and stuff a few years ago, I don't yeah. know if it's still there because this was pre-pandemic, but there was a place out like Massapequa. Uh, there was like a furniture store. Like they, they did refinishing and stuff and they sold things. So the best thing oh, to yeah? do, yeah, they were off of, it was off of Sunrise Highway and it was like Westbury, Massa, you know, it was Massapequa. Okay. It was out that way. Um, the best thing to do is uh, kind of Google it and then you can look up like, you know, what, who's where in the area that sells their mm -hmm. stuff. And if you go to the Annie Sloan, Sloan website, she, yeah, yeah, on the Annie Sloan website, she has a store locator for all of North America. Right, which will give okay. you every dealer in North okay, America. Okay, good. But they're few mm. and far between. <laughs> yeah, they, they, every store that carries it has to go through a two-day training thing, and they have to go to their closest distributor. So this is a big investment on the part of the store to yeah. carry it. So that's why not a lot of stores will make that investment, right? But she has a lot of videos on her website of how to do things and yeah. all that. 
And I don't know, can yeah. you order directly from the website? I don't know. I can't There's a remember. couple of Canadian companies, as I mentioned, one's called Colorantic, and oh. they got a ton of videos. Unfortunately, Parlez-vous Francais is the only way you're going to uh, <laughs> uh, understand the videos because um, it's all in French. Oh, <laughs> It's probably the français, and another Canadian company is Cottage Paints. Yeah, I've seen that one. And they do about seventy colors. Well, you can go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and have them mix up any color you want in a little tiny container that's big enough to do just about anything. Right. Um, and I, yeah. I think it's like five or six dollars, so it's not but a bad they, deal. Yeah. But that's they not do that chalk. with chalk paint. Also, that's no. not necessarily chalk. No. So Not there would chalk. be architectural no, wall the other paint yeah. they right. of for. course yeah. but the good thing about those is that many times they have primer already in them which is great right so you're saying that to do 3d printing this would work also i don't know i've never used it on 3d printed stuff mm. well, but chalk probably, paint is still an acrylic well, it's probably it's still it acrylic work. paint yeah, yeah. It probably would work on 3D printing, mm -hmm. um, you know. Did you ever hear of mud paint? No. It's also like a chalk paint. I saw when I was in uh, Maine, I found this shop and I didn't buy it because I didn't <sighs> know, if it was, you know, because of the whole chalk paint thing, they had really nice colors. I just took a picture of it to look yeah. it up. Sounds like a brand name. All chalk yeah. paints basically are mineral-based paints. And uh, so in the case of chalk paint, the, the mineral is chalk. So in, you, in your brand mud paint, I would say it's some other mineral in it other than chalk. Yeah, I guess I could look it up. and. There's always Google. Yeah. They just have really nice colors. Yeah. And this woman was using it to refinish um, furniture. Yeah. I have used chalk paint to refinish regular furniture, not miniature, as well as I've used it on miniature. But mm -hmm. um, I've done it on regular furniture. Mainly because I just don't like all the sanding and using uh, strippers and stuff on the finishes. And so chalk paint can go right over it. Mm -hmm. So then it's Maybe. kind of upscaling furniture. Like when you take old furniture, miniature furniture, and you're doing something new with yes. it. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Main I thing with any time using chalk paint is use some type of TSP with it first. Give it a good washing. You don't have oh, to sand. To yes. use what? You make sure you re you get TSP, trisodium phosphate. Um, just make sure you get rid of any gunk. At the store, when I took the class at the store, it was with a regular piece of furniture, and they had us clean it all with alcohol first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple comments in the chat box um, from Shirley that she doesn't know if it would work on brushes, but she used vinegar to take paint out of a tablecloth. Right, she said that, yeah. And uh, from Kimberly, window cleaner will take dried paint off hands almost instantly. That's yeah. interesting. Oh. All right. I wonder if it's the ammonia or the alcohol that works. <laughs> Some have both, some have one or the other. Because mm -hmm. hmm. alcohol works really well too. Oh, and you know, if you want to take take stain off, uh, like Minwax stain off your hands, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you wash them in salad oil, you know, Wesson oil or Crisco oil or any of those yeah. vegetable oils and scrub them and use a fingernail brush to get under your fingernails and stuff. Then scrub your hands with soap and water and you get rid of it and you don't have to use paint thinner or those harsher things. That's good to know. Sometimes Vaseline will work with that too. 
it might it'd probably be the same kind of idea yeah the not set in stain but on your hands but well right after you've been staining i don't yeah. i don't put gloves on so i just get it in every yeah oh, same. my oh. cuticles and everything else <laughs> so i yeah. have to use a fingernail brush to get it out and and i use uh yeah salad oil or you know vegetable oil and then i learned that many years ago from someone if you're making um arrange flower arrangements with uh, greens in the uh, winter time at christmas the vegetable oil takes off the sap right off your hands that oh. works really well yeah yeah Are we pretty well done then with this? Uh, speak, speaking of using oil, sometimes you get oil on your clothing. Um, yeah. I read um, that you can use chalk, like real, you know, like regular chalk, not chalk paint. <laughs> oh, just a white chalk, you mean? Yeah. They remove oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm always then getting you can oil wash, on my Then you have to get the chalk off. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the chalk would dissolve in the uh, the wash. Yeah. I think so. Yes, I was kidding. Yes, <laughs> you just draw a little design in chalk, yes. and you'll have a whole new outfit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think our conversation on brushes is winding down. No. And I can't remember if there was anything else on the agenda or not. <laughs> no, it was a great conversation. Thank you, everyone. It's very yeah. knowledge. Yeah, a lot of Yes, I really enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our meeting okay. is over for.